All right, so welcome everyone to Life After Being a Purchase Panther. Uh, we have this awesome panel um, that the Office of Alumni Engagement set up. My name is Alex and I work in the Office of Alumni Engagement and the Athletics Department um, has been a wonderful partner with us and we have a really great group of panelists, all Purchase Panthers that are here to talk about what their life has been since they took a Panther. Um, so I'm gonna introduce our moderators. One is actually an alum, so we have Stephanie, and then we have Justin. They will be co-moderating this panel uh, tonight. You guys can get started. Welcome, everyone, um, and thank you, Alex. Um, again, my name is Stephanie Santora. I'm the Sports Information Director at Purchase College, former alum as well, graduated 2011, journalism major, and a member of the women's soccer team. Uh, the Assistant Director of Sports Information, Justin Lovell, uh, will be my co-host tonight, and I just want to welcome everyone uh, to this Q&A and life after being a Purchase Panther, or in the case of one of our panelists, continuing life as a Purchase Panther. So at this time, I just want to quickly just go through our and introduce our eight panelists. Uh, first off, we have Bobby Chafferditi. Uh, Bobby's one of our oldest alum here with us tonight. Uh, he's a 2002 journalist. Oh, <laughs> was a member of the club baseball team before it became an NCAA collegiate sport at Purchase. Uh, he's also, he came back to work uh, 2006 at Purchase as the first ever sports information director. So he's one of my former mentors. Uh, and thank you, Bobby, for being here. Uh, Miles, I think Miles is going to be a little bit late. He'll be joining us, but he is a uh, 2016 graduate uh, with a degree in theater and performance and a former member of the men's soccer team. We have Jess and Austin Groves here. Uh, Jess is a 2011 psychology grad uh, and a member of the women's soccer team. Her husband, Austin, uh, also a 2011 psych grad, uh, and a member of the baseball team. Austin is also the first baseball player inducted into the Panther Hall of Fame. Right. Then we have Albana Kresnicki Munret. Uh, she is 2006 grad and former three sport athlete at Purchase. Uh, she was a stand up member of the Purchase softball, soccer, and basketball teams, and a member, she was uh, one of the first inducted into the Panther Hall of Fame. She's also a current staff member at Purchase College. Uh, then we have Brendan Laporte, 2016 liberal studies grad and former member of the Panther baseball team. Brendan also came back a few years later to coach a couple seasons with the Panthers. Uh, so welcome, Brendan. Max Pierce, uh, 2018 economics grad and one of the most, I would say, notable members of the Panther uh, basketball program. Um, we're very happy that you're here, Max. Uh, Jasmine, 2015 uh, economics grad and former two-sport athlete. She was a member of the Panther women's tennis and lacrosse team. So without further ado, I'm going to open this up to our eight panelists. And I would like at this time um, for our eight, eight panelists, we're going to lead off with Jasmine. Uh, if you could just kind of give us a little bit about what you're up to now, where you are now. Um, and how COVID-19 has affected your life uh, and your work at this point. Sure. So right now I am in Tapan, New York. I'm actually outside of the restaurant that I am now co-owning and operating. It is called Noodle Hub. It is a Thai-style noodle place. Um, so we opened last July, so it's almost a year since we've been open. And basically COVID has put us on our toes and made us completely rethink and change how we're running everything. So we had to go from having a 20 seat restaurant to not allowing anyone into the restaurant at all and dealing with um, making our customers feel comfortable and making our staff feel comfortable. So it's just, it's a huge learning process and just, you know, constantly staying on top of the news and everything and making sure that you know, that, you know, we're serving people food. So it's part of their livelihoods, you know, so it's, it's really important that we take care of them and make sure we meet their expectations of, you know, health and safety. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's fun. Um, but it's a, it's a lot of work. 
So I'm happy Thank to answer you. more questions later if anybody wants to reach out to me. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to Max. You could just give us a little bit about what you're up to now and how COVID-19 has affected you. Um, right now, I'm actually recovering from an injury. Um, but I mean, other than that, I wouldn't have gotten injured had COVID not been here. I still would have been on the road. Um, my season with the Globe Shot has got ended early. We were supposed to finish in June, and we ended up finishing in the end of February. Um, so a lot of what I've been doing lately has been a lot of virtual PR um, for just trying to keep our fans engaged and entertained by us. Um, it's certainly allowed me to spend more time with my family, uh, sharpen my mind a little bit, and just get some time at home. I, I haven't really had a lot of time at home in the last two years, so this is great. Nice. Thanks, Max. Uh, next up, we have Jess and Austin. Hi, everyone. I'm Jess. Um, I currently work at the University of Connecticut as an academic advisor. So in terms of how COVID has affected my life, I'm working from home and just like all of you, I'm, you know, deep in classes, advising, you know, classes for next semester, for the fall, for summer, um, what we should do with academics right now. So um, I've been working a lot and been more busy, I think, than I normally am at this time of the year. Um, but working from home is kind of nice and off to wear pants as we were discussing earlier, which is cool. My God. Sure. Um, all right, so I'm Austin. Uh, so I've been a police officer for the past uh, eight years now. Um, so obviously the, the COVID situation has kind of changed a lot of things we do now uh, operationally throughout the department. Um, but as far as, you know, my schedules, you know, not too much has changed that, that much. Uh, you know, we still obviously have to go in. So my day-to-day -day is somewhat similar. Obviously what we're doing now is changing quite a bit. And it's probably going to change permanently through the future, um, kind of seeing what's, you know, things that are just more effective now uh, due to this. But, uh, yes, yeah, you know, staying safe. Uh, so far, so good. So <laughs> that's it. Thank you both. Uh, next up, uh, Brendan, if you could just tell us a little bit about what you're up to and how COVID-19 has been affecting you. What's going on, guys? I'm Brendan. I work for Boston Scientific, so I cover Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont. I'm currently living in uh, New Hampshire. Right now, we're staying home. Once the U.S. Surgeon General kind of stopped it, stopped elective cases, we were kind of put on hold with our procedures because our medical devices pertain to non-elective, uh, to elective cases. So I've been staying at home doing a lot of telemedicine calls with the patients that are looking forward to having their uh, procedures with us that had cancellations in the past. And over the past couple of weeks, New Hampshire and Maine has lightened their restrictions on going into hospitals. So for the past week and a half, um, I've been actually um, in surgeries, uh, helping patients and whatnot. But for the first two months, we've been doing everything from home, speaking to our physicians and patients via te telemedicine, doing Zoom calls, Teams meetings, and whatnot. So it's starting to ramp back up now. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, Albana. How hey guys, I'm Alana. Uh, good, good. Um, I work for Purchase. I'm the internal operations manager. Um, so kind of like what everyone else has been saying, you know, uh, working from home. Um, and while I'm doing my job from home with rentals and everything on Zoom with all the meetings with the staff members, I've also become a teacher to a kindergartner, a second grader. Um, so it's been quite interesting taking care of uh, three kids, doing my job. But it's been nice. Like Max said, it's getting a lot of quality time with family and stuff. So in a way, I'm trying to take advantage of this time with my kids. But it's been good. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alvada. Uh, is Miles, did Miles join us? I'm here. He I'm Welcome, Miles. So Thank I don't know if you heard, if you could just kind of Introduce yourself um, and kind of what you've been up to now and how COVID-19 has been affecting your work and uh, your life. Cool. Yeah. So uh, I'm an actor. I graduated in 2016 and I played in the soccer team. Um, yeah, it's been kind of crazy. I was shooting a TV show in Spain, this uh, medieval TV show with Jane Seymour and Denise Richards. And we were, we were supposed to shoot in Italy 
And then the COVID thing hit Italy. It was kind of after China, Italy was kind of the first kind of epicenter of where it was going to hit. And we were supposed to shoot there for a couple weeks. And that got canceled, obviously. And they decided to move everything to Spain, like last minute. So they moved all the production and shooting to Spain. And I went there and I was there for just a couple weeks. And I was able to kind of leave right on the precipice of um, when it started to kind of really hit Spain. And then they were shooting for like another week. And then they finally canceled and shut down the whole production and postponed it. So I got out of there just in time. But uh, yeah, ever since it's, you know, obviously with acting, you have to be on uh, a set with 200 to 300 people. So it's not really the <laughs> best job during a quarantine crisis. But uh, so yeah, I've just been kind of waiting for this to pass over and doing projects in the meantime, trying to stay busy. Awesome. Thank you, Miles. Well, welcome. And last but not least, Bobby. Is this because I'm the elder statesman of the group <laughs> that I have to go last? I mean, my feelings are a little <laughs> I, hurt, actually. I figured you would talk, talk the most. So we... Ooh, low blow, <laughs> low blow. I was just about to compliment you, too, saying that you're doing a very good job hosting the panel, but I'm going to refrain, I guess. <laughs> um, you know, I guess first and foremost, uh, not too far removed from my purchase days and excited to see uh, you doing so well, Steph, and really happy to see everyone else on this panel tonight. Uh, as far as my newer gig, I've been at WFUV 90.7 FM for the last two years, first uh, initially in the interim, and now as the full-time sports director of a department that has no sports. So thankfully, since I have a few talents, they've um, transitioned me over to the news side of things. So I've been doing newscasts. Uh, in the afternoons, and I write for the website, and uh, thankfully still have a job, which is a good thing. I'm also the sports director for BronxNet TV here in New York, and I've been doing a lot of uh, basically virtual sports segments, uh, which have been pretty cool. Believe it or not, I think with everybody being home, it's been much more easier to get guests. Uh, you know, I had uh, Smush Parker, who played in the NBA and was teammates with Kobe Bryant. He was on the show yesterday, and I'm having uh, Ryan Rucco, who's one of the uh, leading voices for the Yankees and the Nets on the show on Friday. So just uh, at home trying to create content and then also, you know, make believe that I'm in the Yankee Stadium press box with some pretty cool Zoom backgrounds here. <laughs> uh, you know, not, not the same, but uh, hopefully tricked a couple of you. Uh, I think I've come long enough to show up. I can use a photo for Biden. You're going to have to show me how to do that, though, Bobby. I like that. I can't, Biz. I, I don't know if you want to put the Mets uh, background or the press box. It, it, it's already, you know. <laughs> the best thing that's happened to you is the fact that there is no baseball season. You don't have to worry about the Mets losing. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bobby. Thanks, um, I'm going to turn it over now to Justin. We're going to kind of do this back and forth uh, questionnaire with our panelists. So at this time, uh, Justin, you're up. Hello, everyone. Justin Lovell, the Assistant Sports Information Director. Um, I know that we were just talking about COVID and that can be heavy. Uh, I know for myself that I'm actually <laughs> sitting in our spare room in my house today just so I could be out of a different room than that how, the, than what I'm normally in. So, uh, but we, wanna, we, wanna, we want this hour to be fun. We want to we wanna have a good time here. So nothing better than nostalgia, right? Uh, so we're going to kick this off by asking everyone, uh, we're going to start with Jess and Austin because you guys went to school together. Uh, what was it like being a member of the Purchase Athletics family as a student? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, not a problem. Uh, I was going to say, uh, what was it like being a member of the Purchase College Athletics family as a student, student athlete? Sure. Um, so I reflect on my time as a student all the time because I work, I work in higher ed and I work with college students every day. So as when I'm talking to students, I often bring up you know, my own experiences and my own, my own, you know, stories. Um, but I just loved so much that I could really, you know, be part of a, a larger community. Um, so much so that I'm here today and I'm, I'm friends with a few folks on the panel and still very close. Um, Yanni, Steph was in my, my wedding and I was in her wedding and, you know, we've gotten, you know, gotten to stay so close. And um, I love most um, being, a dedicated athlete, but also being 
something else, right? A psych major, you know, um, looking for my passion, looking for what I wanted to do, where I was able to do things like internships and all these other things and work with the athletic staff where I was able to then, you know, work. I worked at Purchase for a short time as well as some other panelists <laughs> have. So um, my favorite thing was just getting to know everyone and then being a close community where I could reach out to some folks and ask questions and, you know, make connections like they say. So I think that's something I talk a lot about with students now is to make connections and maintain those connections over time. Sorry. You never know when that's going to come up, but that's my thing. I'll get Quincy and we can talk. <laughs> so uh, my answer's not going to be quite that long, but everything she just said, and uh, I'll build off the, uh, you know, looking back at just all the relationships, I was able to make some long lasting relationships. Uh, like she mentioned, we've had a bunch of people, um, you know, that we, that I played baseball with, she played soccer with that were in our wedding, you know, however many years later, we still stay in close contact with them. Um, you know, we still do things like this. I really enjoy, uh, you know, at least every, every few months or a year, you know, come back to campus, do something, try to go see a game, go see a basketball game or something. Maybe stop at the hub. Right, I yeah, don't know. That's only, uh, <laughs> for nostalgia purposes, we always try to stop at the hub and see if there's any, uh, any eateries that we still know. Um, yeah, just, just it was always so welcoming, um, made tons of great relationships there and still maintain, you know, a ton of them. So that's it. That's awesome. Thank you both so much. And hopefully we can uh, have your dog go viral tonight. <laughs> in case, in case he continues to <laughs> get in there. Um, Miles, actually, since you're on the screen, what about you? Um, yeah, I think it, just to kind of reflect what you're saying, um, I'm still kind of best friends with all my purchase guys, and we still hang out in the city. A lot of them still work and work in the tri-state area, especially in the city. So um, I really created a family, I think, when I was playing uh, purchase soccer. Um, we were lucky enough to win a championship in my junior year. So we kind of really created a special bond that I think you can only get through athletics. And I think kind of that teammate aspect and learning to work with a team, work with different personalities kind of went along going to my business of working with all the crazy personalities you kind of encounter on a TV or film set. So it was really great there. And just honestly, I just had the best experience. I, I transferred in after my freshman year playing soccer at another school and it was like totally different atmosphere and um you know working with bobby uh you know and chris they're the best so i had I honestly had the best time awesome well thank you so much for that contribution uh jasmine and albana you both played more than one sport here how would you say that your time being a two sport and a three sport athlete how, how was that compared to just playing one sport would you say um, um, Manny, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I, I guess I love purchase so much that I never left. 14 years <laughs> later, here I am. Um, I, I really, a little bit of like what Jess said and what Miles said, um, I loved it. it. It was like a family. Um, the people in the department, I've become so close to, and part of that also has to do with the fact that I've worked there. But even my teammates, every single one of my bridesmaids was one of my teammates. Um, and I really, it was like a second home to me. And then as far as your question with the playing three sports, that's kind of why I love purchase because I was able to play more than one sport. Uh, it was a difficult at times, you know, trying to keep my grades up, work full time so I could pay for school and still play three sports, but I loved it. Um, I wouldn't change any bit of it. Uh, it was just, for me, it was unbelievable. It was amazing. It, I would not change one thing about it. Jasmine? Yeah. Yeah, so for me, playing the two sports, you know, it's like Albana said, you know, it's purchase is so gracious in the athletics department as well as that they allow you to take on more extracurricular activities than, you know, some other schools where they're like, no, choose one and you're done. So, you know, being able to do, play tennis and then starting off with like first ever purchase women's lacrosse team, you know, is, is huge. And then I was also in the student government. So it's like my experience as an athlete and then student government was uh, stu student involvement. So I advocated for student involvement. So it's like really like I spent my time like bonding really close with like I got a bigger family. You know, I had two teams that I could get my friend groups from. 
Um, and we would just go out, you know, and really like be like, hey, arts department, you know, we got some sports too, you know, you can do both. And, you know, so it was really fun, you know, wearing our uniforms, bring our lacrosse sticks around and, you know, like playing catch on the quad and things like that. And we just have a ton of people coming up being like, wait, we have sports here. Like there's a gym. So, you know, it was, it's kind of fun being like, yeah, you just walk down the hill, you know, it's pretty cool. So. That's awesome. Uh, Bobby, how would you say your experience was? You were, you know, and I, I don't mean this as a joke. You were the, you're the oldest person to, so you've seen. Shots fired again. No, man. that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm just saying you had the experience of being one of the earlier graduates. And then you spent more than a decade here. How would you say? Hurts. And more than a decade. More than a decade. <laughs> um, well, you know, first and foremost, I think my my experience as a college student, of course, was great, even though I know that Albana and Steph tease me all the time about that. I think that the term is NARP. I think that's what I'm supposed to be uh, by not being an official college athlete at purchase. But, um, I, you know, I had the I had the real privilege of being around the, the program in, in its kind of infant years when it was trying to find its footing. And for those that are on the panel and even those that are, are tuning in now that might have been unaware. But, you know, at that time, the pro when I was a student at Purchase, the program was, you know, just in terms of a number of teams, you're talking about five or six teams. We did have several teams that were successful, but the program really was pushed to the side because the New York Knicks trained at the campus and there just really wasn't enough space to accommodate having this full fledged college athletic program and also the New York Knicks on campus. And then, of course, getting the opportunity to come back as an employee for the department was really the beginnings of what you guys are getting a chance to be part of tonight in terms of these alums that had the success. And I feel like it was really a big part, Justin, of, of the growth of the program to go from, at that time, pretty much independent of the NCAA as a college student, even if we had some successful teams, to them returning as as someone that was kind of you know kind of the mouthpiece of the program like you and Stephanie are doing now in, in terms of trying to promote what we're doing and highlight what the athletes are doing and I think that that's probably been the greatest greatest thing for me to see where the program is today it's a true testament to what Ernie and Chris have done and what the staff has continued to do awesome thank you Bobby uh, Brendan what about yourself what would you how would you describe your time as a student athlete so kind of like Miles, I transferred in. I, I went to Lynchburg College in Virginia prior to coming to purchase. But I mean, I'm still in a group chat with 15 of my teammates and I graduated four years ago. And uh, I was lucky enough to play for Coach Taraska. And the night of my awards dinner at Boston Scientific, I'm at the table before receiving my award texting him. And I can honestly say not a lot of, not a lot of players at other colleges have the relationships that I have with my teammates and my coach. Um, and I can honestly say when I came over to purchase college, Coach Traska said to me, I'm not going to only teach you baseball, but I'm going to teach you how to be a man and how to be and how to survive in the real world. And I can honestly say that he's helped me tr tremendously throughout my career now. And I can still call him anytime and he's willing to help. And even to have an uh, athletic director like Viz, where you can just walk into his office and talk. I mean, that helped tremendously. And I'm thankful for all the relationships that I made, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, because it, it made me who I am today. For sure. Thank you so much. I was going to say, I've only been at the college for a year now, but you can definitely feel the family aspect for sure. Ab absolutely. Um, yeah. And then, so last but not least, Max, you're the newest graduate. You were 2018. Um, you also might, like as Steph mentioned earlier, you might have the highest profile of anyone here. You've been on ESPN with some of your dunks and you're on the Globetrotters now. You have your own <laughs> nickname. How would you describe your time as a student athlete? And then how has that influenced how you are now? So um, first off, I, like some of the other panelists, I transferred in from Fredonia State after my freshman year. And right off the bat, one of the things that I noticed when I got to purchase was how close knit it was. And that is uh, evident throughout my entire purchase career, especially towards the end of my, my three year purchase span. Um, when, you know, Bobby and Chris and the entire purchase community, not just the, um, the athletic community, but the entire school community came together and, you know, really helped me to get where I am today. So I am forever indebted to you guys and, and the continuous support that you've given me because it's allowed me to do what I'm doing now. Um, so I thank you all, I thank you all for that. Um, but in terms of, you know, when I, when I was in that purchase uniform, I remember distinct differences between just the one year that I spent at Fredonia versus the three years that I spent at Purchase. 
um, you know, just the, the open line of communication between uh, Chris and, you know, Bobby is, and, and pretty much everyone has just been a whole lot easier. It's made any hiccups that I might have had uh, throughout that three year span, it's made it easy for me to communicate with them and, and get through that. So, um, you know, it's just, it's been an awesome experience. That's fantastic. Obviously, we hope, uh, Max, that you continue to recover and we get to see more of those awesome dunks. I know every time I'm signing on, I, uh, I'm always impressed. So uh, for the next round, I'm going to pass it back to Steph. Yeah, so the next question I have for you guys, um, obviously, someone like Max, who uh, it's very evident that you've continued on your college sport and you're continuing to play basketball. Um, but as far as for our other panelists as well, I want just kind of curious, have you continued to play the sport that you did in college? Uh, did you pick up something new? How is our sport still playing a role uh, in your life today? So I'm gonna uh, kick it off with uh, Albana. Actually, Steph, one second. Just yeah. so everyone watching, um, if you have a question for any of our panelists or if you wanna bring up anything, make sure you use the chat function on the bottom there so that way you can write in. Thank you. Justin. We'll get to those at the end. Yes. Um, but yeah, Alban, if you could just kick it off. I mean, we know you're at, still at Purchase and you're coaching, but if you could kind of just talk a little bit about that and how your time at Purchase as a student athlete, you know, has has led you down and to the uh, role that you're playing now as a, a coach of a collegiate team. Um, you know, I guess I graduated and right after I graduated, I started working there full time. Um, and outside of the uh the working full time i was coaching so I, i've coached volleyball i've coached basketball there um it's just it, it's been great i i've been enjoying it um and i haven't really been playing much uh, i guess really no time you know between work and kids and stuff but i have still been uh doing a lot of coaching at the collegiate side and also coaching my kids teams like my daughter joined a softball team uh softball team so i've been coaching that but um, that's really kind of it. And then I've been trying to stay in shape and we, with one of the coworkers at Purchase, we're trying to do a Spartan race because you still have that athletic, that uh, competitive side. And you know me, I'm extremely competitive. So I need something, um, but because I haven't had the chance to kind of play, you know, soccer or basketball or anything like that, uh, it's just been coaching or when we do our staff basketball games on Fridays, but that's about it. Thank you. Uh, Justin Austin, can you just talk a little bit, you know, sports still play a role in your life today? Yeah, so since graduating, I played pickup soccer in, in local, like, you know, co-ed leagues. Um, fun fact, I had no injuries <laughs> in my four years of <laughs> purchase. As soon as I graduated, something happened. I got a concussion, uh, a pretty severe concussion the day before my um, graduate program my grad school graduation so I was I had a concussion and I had a very bad sprained ankle so I was sitting on the stage in a wheelchair and then shortly after that maybe like two years later I tore my ACL playing co -ed so that was great and fun and I had to you know go through that experience with surgery and recovery and it wasn't good it was not a good experience and I had to have a second surgery so that was fun and uh, but um, I am still playing well I was now there's COVID, so I'm not playing. So we just, <laughs> we are. but, um, but yeah, I, I still play and uh, we play golf um, together and we hike and that's basically the extent of my physical activity. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we kind of have the injury bug, like, as a couple. <laughs> um, so in my, in my case, Bad I had, knees. I had a pretty major knee injury prior to even getting to purchase, which I'll give uh, coach Guerrero, you know, I'll give him a little shout out. Cause he, you know, it happened at a time right after I sort of committed to purchase and uh, you know, he was very good at, you know, you know, don't worry about it. Whenever you get back, you'll get back. Um, you still have a spot on the team. So, you know, kind of to piggyback on that family aspect of the program. Um, so I kind of came in with a pretty major injury. Uh, I was able to stay injury free throughout my career, but it was kind of, you know, it was something I always had to kind of battle. Um, so after college, I don't think, Unless I played a summer league or something like that, maybe for a season, I pretty much stopped baseball. And that's, you know, it's a combination of dealing with that injury still and kind of just the real world, you know, going to work, stuff like that. 
you know, I've taken up other sports like uh, like golf, softball. Uh, I played soccer. We played a little soccer. Bit of soccer. Um, so you know, continue to work out things like that. Uh, but you know, also it's hard to kind of recreate that that same competitive atmosphere that you get in college sports at purchase. And so, you know, except for a very select few that go on to play professionally and things like that, purchase, you know, in college sport is kind of the high, highest level you're going to play. And it's very, very hard to, to get that after you graduate. So anyone listening that's still in it, certainly enjoy it while you still have it. I'm very rude to all my co-ed team members for not taking it. Yeah, people like her. <laughs> Thank you both. Uh, Jess, you also forgot to mention that that ACL injury came months before your, your wedding as well. Oh, yeah. It was a great time in my life where I had no injuries and then I had several. <laughs> <laughs> or like Shoot. epic moments in your life. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Bobby. Yeah. So just to, you know, you know I love to tease and, and joke. Um, and I've known you for a long time. And when I was a student athlete, uh, you know, you were active but you weren't the Bobby that we're looking at today so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about <laughs> messed up messed up tonight I feel like I'm getting picked on left and right here I don't know listen I got it stuff I got to give you credit because you know when I years ago even working there and you you as my assistant I was more about cheeseburgers and french fries and you turned me on to these amazing kale shakes and life has just been uh, peachy ever since so um, definitely a, a big part of uh, my turnaround going from potential heart attack candidate to uh, hopefully being around for, <laughs> for quite some time. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bobby. I apologize. It's payback for mo many years of uh, torture. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. I'll take it in stride. I'll take it in stride. You know, I was just, you know, I actually was going to try to pick on Biz a little bit because, you know, I know with all the barbershops closed, I was wondering how he figured figured out how to handle this thing because he looks the best. I mean, my hair is getting long. Liz, where, where did you go to the barber? <laughs> you can't even chime in, right? Come, come, come on. <laughs> come over anytime. I'll help you out, buddy. No problem. Uh, First in the chair. <laughs> so next, uh, Jasmine, if you could just give a little bit about uh, sports are still playing a role in your life today. Sure. So. Um, Tennis is still a huge part. Um, when I was teaching in Korea, I would do meetups and I would do tennis almost every single weekend. But as most people know, like college lacrosse for women is that's pretty much all that you get. It's once you graduate, it's, there's not any pro teams. There's very few extracurricular activities and meetups that you can join. Like there's a few in the city, but you know, because I'm running a restaurant now, you know, the opportunity to get down there is very slim so I really look forward to alumni games and I hope it's things open back up so that we can have our alumni game maybe in the fall Francesca please <laughs> if things open but that's what I look forward to you know is like being able to get back on purchase you know see my teammates again and you know be able to play catch again I'm always ready to play Jasmine whenever you want <laughs> <laughs> thanks coach Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, Miles, what about you with acting and everything going on? Uh, sports is still an important part of your life? Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm still obsessed with soccer like I've always been. Um, I play with my co-captain, who is my co-captain that purchased Tim Rear. We play in a, um, a pickup kind of soccer league in the city every once in a while. And I usually, we, me, him, and Danny, um, the late guys who also played in the team his senior year, we, uh, a lot of weekends, not anymore because everything shut down, but during the Premier League season, the English Premier League season, we go to, you know, the city bars on like a Saturday morning. It's kind of like a weird traditional cultural thing in the city and around the world to go watch a Premier League game at a bar at uh, 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning. But uh, so I do that with them sometimes. Um, unfortunately, I don't get to play soccer as much as I'd like. Um, I try to get there as much as possible because there's a lot going on in the city that you can join pickup leagues, co-ed leagues. Um, I've had to learn how to play some sports for acting. You got to do that sometimes. I, uh, I picked up hockey for a little bit. Purchase, of course, never had a hockey team. Uh, I still suck at hockey. Let's just put it that way. So that's a hard sport. Um, had to learn how to horseback ride. So there's things you, you, you get to do as an actor. That's kind of cool. You pick up new sports, but, um, yeah, soccer is still a big passion of mine, so hopefully I get to play 
a little bit more of it once this is all done. Awesome. Thank you. Brendan, what about you? So after, after college, I coached uh, for purchase as well as some travel leagues. Uh, but I, I kind of stopped playing because kind of what Austin said is you can't really replicate that competitiveness that purchase allowed you to have. So I really, I personally had no interest in playing in like the over 40 leagues or like with the, with the older guys that, I mean, I can't kind of be around like non-competitive baseball. So um, I kind of just hung it up. I was happy with the way I went out, but still extremely active working out, you know, anything I could do on the weekends. Uh, my girlfriend, Nicole, who graduated from purchase, we go running. She kind of forces me to do it, but stay active as much as I can, uh, but no baseball. Got it. Thank you. And Max, just going to kind of uh, wrap it up with you. Um, again, knowing that you're continuing to play basketball, can you just kind of give a little bit about how your time at Purchase and, you know, maybe it was the, the NCAA Dark Horse Dunk Contest and, and how kind of that series of events have led to the path that you're on right now? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, for one, that path is such uncharted territory for a Division three athlete. So I was, um, I kind of was not expecting to be on that path as soon as I got to purchase. Um, but, you know, with the help of the, the entire student body and um, especially Biz and Bobby, um, Sammy, Vic, um, I was able to do that. And so I think that, well, one of the things, one of the things that was really cool to me is that um, my coach, Kyle Martin, and um, and Bobby came to San Antonio for the contest. And so just being able to look up and see other purchased Panthers in the stands, it just made me feel a little bit more like I was at home. Um, I knew everybody back in New York was watching on TV, but it, it still wasn't the same when, you know, half of the crowd there was from San Antonio supporting the two Texas dunkers. Um, so that kind of, close-knit support really, really goes a long way, and I will forever cherish and remember that. Um, and, you know, it's just representative of the Purchase Panther way. Thank you. And for those of you that don't know, um, Max was, uh, he competed at the 2018 NCAA Dark Horse Contest, which is an event that goes on during the final four weekend. Um, and Max was, uh, you know, he came close. It was within decimals of a point um that you know he came close to winning that competition and um in articles with uh the globetrotters you know it's kind of commented that it was that event that kind of put him on the map and um that you know, sure <laughs> you know got got the globetrotters interested in him so um thank you max for that uh thank justin you. turning it back over to you for sure thanks steph uh, so actually, I wanted to touch on something that Bobby said earlier, and then I'm going to have you lead into the next question. Uh, earlier, you said one of the biggest challenges you faced while you were a student was the fact that um, the programs at Purchase, there were only a few of them when you first started, and that they were uh, splitting time with the Knicks who used to play at the facility. So my question is, obviously, that was a major challenge that you faced. Would you say that that was the biggest one? That was uh, the biggest challenge that you faced as an athlete or as a student at Purchase? What other things did you have to deal with? Well, I mean, definitely at that time, big challenge for the department. Because I'm sorry, yeah, because obviously you carved out like a major career in sports, whereas yeah. like a lot of other people might not have been able to. So how did you overcome this? Well, you know, again, I think for the, 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 the department, Justin, excuse me, I guess the department at that time was, you know, having to try to navigate around the Knicks. I mean, that's pretty much the biggest way to, to say it. I mean, again, it, you know, it was a big deal because they were a team that, of course, was generating money for the department, but it took opportunities away from the students, which maybe at that time might not have been perceived of as a big deal because, uh, again, purchase at that time might not have been known for its athletics, but slowly you had more people that were coming, more students that were coming on the campus that were very interested in athletics. And that provided an opportunity to maybe consider growing the department. You gotta remember at that time, didn't have teams like, uh, you didn't have a baseball team. Again, some of the teams were good. Our cross country team was good. Our basketball team happened to still be very good. 
but some of the teams just, you know, didn't have the numbers. We didn't have that big of a program. And then uh, I would say the biggest challenge probably was just trying to overcome perhaps a, a stigma of an art school trying to adjust to having an athletic program. I, I think it's almost unfair to some degree that each of the student schools kind of ends up having um, notoriety for certain things, which, you know, again, could be good or could be bad. But at the same time, I, I think the SUNY schools offer a multitude of different things, even purchased, maybe still known to some degree as an art school, but we have some other programs that are very, very good on campus. I think that uh, many of the students that come in now have benefited from even the psych program, the journalism program, uh, the biology program, you know, so it's the same with sports, you know, maybe at that time wasn't known for sports, but over time, it's become more and more known for sports because of the success that we've had. Absolutely. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate your input. Uh, Miles, what about you? I know that you were a part of, uh, you said earlier, part of a uh, soccer team that won the Skyline title. Um, any of that emotion ever play into being an actor? Or uh, what, were, what were some of the challenges that you were you faced while being a student athlete? Um, yeah, I think one of the challenges I faced was you coming into an art school, you know, a lot of the professors, they think that should be your number one focus, which is totally fine. It's an art school. But um, I think one of the hard things to balance was trying to balance the theater world and kind of the art world with the athletic world because they're kind of intrinsically different in that way so it was like the teachers would be like oh you're going to practice instead of going to rehearsal with your your classmates or you're going to miss class because you have a game you know they didn't really understand that and to me so it was like this kind of hard paradoxical thing and i remember the semifinal going into, you know, that championship season, we were going to, uh, I think, play Sage, and they were undefeated, so it was like this big match. And I remember I, uh, I was supposed to have, like, a final dress rehearsal for this, you know, student play I was in. And I remember telling the, you know, the kids and the director, like, oh, guys, I can't really make it. I got a, I got a game. I got to go. It's really important. And they're like, a game? Like, what do you mean? Like, sport? And I was like, yeah, I play in a soccer team here at college. And they they really totally didn't understand it. Kind of got kind of pissed off. But anyways, we went there and we ended up coming down from like 2-0, I think. We ended up beating them 4-2 in overtime with some like crazy match like that. I remember we all running onto the field. We were like, took our shirts off. It was like the craziest thing. We won an OT and we ended up going to the final after that. And it was like, I still remember that feeling today like after that win and after those those winning goals like those feelings never go away it's the most incredible feeling and I think it was just one of the sacrifices I think a lot of the, everyone else can kind of speak to it too on this panel that you did kind of have to balance it because in, in a normal school like when I went to Central Connecticut State University you know playing a division one sport they're like athletics is almost like first so it's like a totally different thing. You miss class, it's no big deal. Like the teacher understands, maybe they'll throw you a good grade or something like that. And it, that doesn't sort of, that thing just sort of doesn't happen in, you know, uh, in art school. So it's like, that was definitely the hardest thing to balance, but I don't think I have any regrets, certainly with the choices I made. Sure. I was going to say, well, I, I know it probably wasn't the easiest decision at the time, but uh, obviously we appreciate you taking the time to <laughs> make sure you play in that game and helping us <laughs> get that title. Um, Jess and Austin, what about you guys? I don't want to uh, touch on anything too personal, but Steph told me a little bit that you guys uh, dated from your freshman year. So not only did you guys have athletics and uh, academics to worry about, but you also had a uh, relationship. So what, what would you guys say were some of your biggest challenges? Actually, I think the relationship was one of the fewer challenges maybe that we had. Our friends, his baseball friends, my soccer friends, we're all friends now. All of us are friends. Um, so, which is, you know, touches on that kind of family aspect earlier. I think for me, one of my challenges was just time, time management, you know, wanting to do all these things in college, you know, be on the soccer team, be a dedicated student athlete, um, work. I worked in the um, PE department in the main office, like something like 10 or 12 hours a week, something like that, and also be a good student and learn and 
want to do things and to figure out what whatever my path was going to be. So, um, and I also worked in the advising center as a student and then as a professional later on. So for me, I think it was just time. It was just managing all these things that I wanted to do. But what was really great about purchase was that I was able to do that. Of course, it was stressful at times, but you know, I mentioned earlier, I work at UConn now which is a division one school. And while these athletes are having a different experience, I, I'm not a division one athlete, so let me be clear about that. But, uh, you know, it's a different experience. They're there to play their sport and that's it. So the, in terms of the education that they get and the decisions that they make, you know, it's not necessarily based on the education and based on the things that they want to do with their career and not most of those students aren't going to go on to be a professional athlete, right? So after you graduate, you still have to be something. You still have to, you know, have a job or work. So what I loved most was being able to have the flexibility to figure that out and figure out who I was as a person and, you know, what I wanted to do with my life. Yeah, so uh, I would agree, uh, you know, the relationship aspect of it was probably the the least of the struggles as far as I mean we uh, got married so college. at least <laughs> nothing I'll admit publicly but um you know I guess I would just piggyback on the you know as far as this, you know uh some adversity I guess uh at purge it's not even really adversity it just makes it interesting is that uh you know like other people have mentioned uh you know purchase isn't seen as that athletic first kind of school you know it's known publicly as an art school but obviously that you know it at least when I got there, the athletics program was already kind of blossoming. It was already very, uh, you know, there's a lot of people involved, a lot of teams. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, as far as the baseball team, at least, we didn't have uh, any kind of fancy new turf field like they do now. So, uh, you know, we had our facilities and they were very modest. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of like we had to take some DIY approaches to like maintaining it and doing things like that. So I'd say that's, you know, technically a struggle. Uh, but it also kind of made it fun. And just the D3 kind of life of traveling around and playing in, you know, taking buses, kind of these, you know, cheap motels. You know, some people would call those challenges, but it, you know, it kind of makes it fun too. And just, can I just say really quick, Miles, I really liked what you talked about when you were talking about, um, you know, the art yeah. side of the institution and athletics. And I sort of, I think both of us could attest to that being the case when we were students as well as that there were students in the conservatories, there were, there was everyone else, right? Yeah. And those lines didn't really cross that much, but when they did cross in athletics, that opened up so, so much more for you. We went to shows of yes. our friends yes. who were in theater or were yeah. in the dance conservatory or whatever, and yeah. the students would come to the games. Yeah. All you students watching, mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. Like, you know, that yeah. used to grow and there's more conservatory students as athletes and athletes as conservatory students. And I think that's a really cool side of purchase that kind of bring, bridges those gaps, like athletics bridges that gap, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll just remark on that really quick because I remember one of my fondest memories of, of the games ever. Obviously, like, some sports got more fans in the games than others um, from the student body. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember one time, uh, I forget which game it was, but it was my sophomore year, and the whole – uh, conservatory of acting uh, senior class came and you know weird art kids so it was an interesting showing and they came like with their chest painted they came with flags they were making <laughs> noises they had like this bullhorn thing and it was just like the coolest thing and I remember them chanting still they were like the chant was something like uh, we're in art school and we're weird and the other team was like it was like St. Joseph's like these Long Island kids that were like What's going on here in the audience it was like the coolest most purchased moment ever and I'll never forget him and we ended up winning that game so it was like very cool so there definitely I think there's definitely more opportunities for that to kind of the worlds to collide if that can happen more and be yeah great. for sure well thank you all for contributing uh we're gonna go to Albana obviously we touched on this earlier you were a three sport athlete so you by definition of playing every season had more built-in challenges how would you say uh would you say that was the biggest one you faced yeah, definitely. I mean, trying to do, you know, play three sports and then uh, work full time. I was working 40 hours a week and going to school full time. Uh, it was definitely challenging. But uh, like I said before, I wouldn't change any bit of it. You know, there were times where like in February, softball season started. So we would have practice at 6 a.m. And then I would go to my classes and then I would have uh, basketball practice either four to six or six to eight. 
And then I would work intramurals from 10 to about 12 midnight. So it was very long days. Um, it, it got crazy sometimes. There were times where, especially by, by my senior year, you know, I was 21. I felt like I was in the body of a 45 year old. My body was just completely beat up and stuff. But um, I, like I said, I, you know, purchase gave me that opportunity. You know, it gave me the opportunity to play three sports. So it was great. Uh, never really complained about that. I, I would say one of the biggest things over the playing the three sports, kind of touching up on what Miles said, just the lack of support by some of the professors. I think that was more challenging because there were certain games where we would have our, you know, our starting nine on a softball field. And then there were certain games where we were missing our starting pitcher because she couldn't miss class. You know, and that kind of gets a little challenging because now it's challenging for the coach because now they have to make last minute decisions on what they're going to do. It was challenging for the team because we didn't have our starters there and stuff. But you make the best of it. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. I was going to say, I know there were, <laughs> there was at least one game earlier this year where we were waiting on your setter. At, yes. the la at the last minute, <laughs> just in case, so that we, we hope that she could get there in time. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she like, showed up five or ten minutes before the game started. And, and that's, I, I think that's one of the biggest challenges. Sure. Uh, Brendan, what about you? I know that uh, Adam Tarasco can give some tough love sometimes, but what would, you, what would you say? Do you think that that helped you in any challenges you faced while you were a student athlete? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say as kind of what everyone, sorry, so kind of what everyone else said about the challenges with the professors. But I think for me, the most challenge I had was my senior year. I was a captain and I remember sitting down with Coach Tarask and was like, he said, like, I don't care what you do when the doors close in your own room by yourself and no one's around. But when you're out there, you're going to represent purchase baseball. And he took that very seriously. And, and that was the hardest thing is when you come in as a senior, there's going to be freshmen depending on you. And they want to see how you walk, how you act, how you dress for class, how you talk to other students, how you interact with, you know, the person ringing you out at the hub. So the biggest challenge for me was setting an example to not only change the kind of stigma around the athletes, but how to lead a group of young men to become men. So when you leave, you kind of leave a legacy. And that's something that was a challenge for me every day is that, you know, when you're tired at six in the morning and coach Tarasco wants you on a Saturday at 6 30 AM ready to go. And you're exhausted as a captain, you can't, you can't voice that, you know, it stinks. You're tired. You know, you have schoolwork to do. You have to put on that smile and be that, that positive person for a whole group of team that depends on you. And I know biz expects a lot out of his athletes in the same thing. Whenever we used to talk to him and, and go in his office for good and bad reasons, he would always remind us that you're, you're a purchase athlete. And that's what I've taken into my life at Boston Scientific is, you know, as much as I would like to say my company cares about me specifically as a person, you represent the company. You represent Boston Scientific when you walk into a hospital. So that's something I learned in Coach Jurassic of Biz and everyone has helped me become, when I came in there, even as a junior, I was a boy, you know, to a man and being able to kind of uh, be out in the business world. Sure, thank you so much. I was, I was gonna say that's still, exists today, but it still holds all of our student athletes to a high standard, absolutely, as we should. Uh, Max, what about you? I know that you said earlier uh, for the Dark Horse competition, you were, you know, you flew out to San Antonio. I'm assuming that you had to juggle some schoolwork then. What would you say some of the challenges that you faced were? Yeah, so um, for me, the two biggest challenges um, really presented themselves within the last year and a half of my time at Purchase. Um, it was two things, the stigma, of coming from a, or playing for a division three school that just hold division three set of stigmas and then the art school stigma so when you combine those two there's just uh, either very little respect or no respect for the athletics at that particular school so that was one of the semi-troubling things for me whenever i would get in a room where um you know there would be athletes like for even just the contest, for example, it's like athletes that played at Texas Tech and like like these big name schools like Duke. And so it was a little tough to relate to them when I was trying to get to know them that weekend. But then as time went on, I just tried to remember that purchase is what makes me unique and coming from purchase is what makes me unique. Um, all of the other people in that room have very similar stories and I don't. And I think that gives me the upper hand. So those uh, stigmas that I was referring to earlier have kind of helped me to, uh, I guess, fuel my fire 
in terms of what direction I want to head in, um, how aggressively I want to represent where I come from and what my story is. Um, and, and the truth of the matter is it's, that's purchase. So. Awesome. Thank you, Max. Appreciate that. And then last but not least, we have Jasmine. Uh, you were a two-sport athlete. You did tennis in the fall and then lacrosse in the spring. Um, obviously, you had that little break in between in the winter, but seeing <laughs> how you own a uh, business, I'm assuming you were pretty busy regardless. So what kind of challenges do you think uh, were your biggest? So I think the biggest, I mean, besides being injured constantly and frequently, um, was just as that so junior senior year I was captain of both teams you know and so and we were very fortunate and got a huge influx of very talented freshmen um but you know freshmen are it's their first time out in the world basically away from their parents so you know they want to party they want to you know experience everything that college has to offer all in their freshman year and you know it's like the biggest challenge was kind of reining them in and get them a little bit more focus you know it's being like this is your season it's like you only get four seasons you know I graduated in three years so I only have three seasons you know so it's just kind of like instilling the importance it's like once once your four years are up like you're you're done playing that like this is it for you you know so it's it's really like it's tough balancing you know and convincing these freshmen it's like yeah we understand like you're young you're for you're just coming into this like it's all brand new and exciting but like you have time to enjoy all of it so when you're in season, like, fo please focus, you know? And then also it's like what everyone else is saying with the arts and conservatory, um, especially with the painting and drawing majors, you know, it's like they would have a class and then they'd have to get 85 to over hundred sketches done, you know, it, within two days or something like that, you know? And so it, it, for tennis, especially, you know, we'd have our girls sitting on the sidelines waiting for their match to start, you know, and they're furiously sketching in their sketchbooks trying to get this stuff done, you know, so you know their brain's like not all there because they're like, if I don't get this done, my grade's gonna drop, but like this game's important too, you know, so I think those were the biggest struggles for us. Absolutely, I hear you. I was gonna say, it's never an easy task to try to have to <laughs> literally be doing work right on the sideline and then get out there and start playing, so. Um, yeah. Thank you all for your answers. I appreciate it. I'm going to pass it back to Steph now. Yes. Uh, so this is going to be the last question coming from Justin and I, and then we just want to make sure that we have time for our viewers to uh, open it up for uh, Q&A with them. So I'm just going to ask our panelists um, uh, for the next question, just, you know, if you can just kind of quickly give uh, your answer. So Last question is, what is the most important piece of knowledge or advice uh, that you would want to give to any incoming student athletes? And again, a lot of the viewers here are uh, incoming recruits. Uh, so any advice that, from your experience that you can give to those incoming freshmen or transfers? And started out with uh, Miles. I may need a second to think about this. So I want to come up with a good answer. <laughs> That's I, fine. I pass for now. Um, Brendan, could I open it up with you? Yeah, absolutely. The biggest piece of advice I would give to incoming, you know, recruits, freshmen, everything like that. That's, that's what you want, right? The piece is, um, to honestly enjoy every day of it. Um, because it's so cliche and I, I keep on bringing up my coaches, but it's funny. They used to say, you know, after our, our losses or, you know, kind of getting beat down a little bit, they would always say, remember this, you know, because when you're done, this is the stuff you're going to wish you came back and you experienced. Um, and I can honestly say, it's like my girlfriend, like I'll be watching baseball and she's like, you miss it, don't you? And I'm like, I miss it every single day. So seriously, enjoy the 6.30 a.m. practices because if you told me I could get a year back and play, I would. And it sounds cliche, but enjoy it, work hard, represent the college to the best of your ability. And, you know, if you do that, you're going to gain these type of relationships that I have with some of the people on the panel, as well as your coaches and your teammates. And just, you know, just love it because it's gone. Four years goes quick. It really does. Thank you, Brendan. All right. You know, instance of this year, you know, a lot of our spring athletes lost an entire season altogether. So thank you for that. Uh, Jasmine. Uh, piggybacking off of what Brendan said, it's really, it's enjoy it. Time does fly. Um, 
but also you are entering into the Panther family. You know, it's, you have so many wonderful resources available to you. It's our coaches and all of the athletic department staff. Like they're there for you 100% of the time. Like, don't be afraid to knock on someone's door. It is always open. They will always take you in and help you through whatever you are going through. And it's really the best family you could ever walk away with. Thank you guys. These are great answers. Miles, can I come back to you? Yeah, <laughs> I'd say, um, again, what Brendan was saying, um, stay present and really enjoy every moment with you can because it does fly by and it's some of the best times we've ever had. It's a really unique experience playing um, a sport at an art school like SUNY Purchase. But I'd also say stay open to every new thing. I remember these were short stints, by the way, but I was on the swim team. I decided like, you know, why not to join the swim team? And I, uh, I was horrible, uh, but it was a great experience and it, it personally allows you to kind of do all these sorts of things. Um, I, I, played men's volleyball for like a hot second that was like two practices worth of uh, time until I realized I could not do it but um you it really I don't know if it's a d3 structure or just kind of how purchase athletics is run you can really have the room to explore different options explore being an athlete and going to school at the same time um so I'd say stay open to new things awesome thank you uh Max so my my biggest advice would be to embrace this journey. Um, Purchase is a school like no other. I'm sure all of the other students can attest to that. Um, the, it, the intricacies of going to Purchase College, being a Purchase Panther, um, they're so unique. And the more that you can embrace that, the more confident you'll be throughout your career at Purchase and post-career. So that, that's my biggest thing is just really embrace your identity as a Purchase Panther. Thank you, Max. Albana. Um, kind of like what some of the other panelists said, you know, one of the biggest things, don't take it for granted. And I say it to my girls all the time on the volleyball team, um, like Brendan said, it, it goes by quick. It really does. And you don't want to have any regrets. Make sure from, you know, your freshman year, you're putting in the work, putting in the time and making sure that you're, doing the best you possibly can for your team and for yourself um, and enjoying every moment of it because it really, I mean, it sucks when it's over. It really does. You know, I, like Brendan said, if I had the chance to go back, I'd go back in a heartbeat and, and do it all over again. It was just my favorite part of Purchase College was playing the sports. Um, and then one of the other things that Jasmine said, one thing that I think Purchase is very unique about is our athletic department itself, the people that work there. And I think a lot of that comes from the athletic director, Chris Biz. You know, my time there, he was my softball coach and basically like my father. He likes to try and say my brother because we're so close in age, but we're not that close. <laughs> and, um, you know, he, he really was, you know, and, and that kind of says a lot about the department themselves. Like everyone cares about you genuinely. Not, you're not just another person, you know, you're not just another name on a roster. You're, you're a human being. You know, Chris is always worried about people's um, grades and stuff, making sure that everyone is graduated in four years. So to me, I thought that was a very, very important thing. The fact that the athletic department, and I, you don't need to, like, you know, someone on the, you could be playing lacrosse, but someone from, you know, the coach from the softball team cares about you. And I think that's a very big thing. I think that shows that we really are a true family. And for me, I mean, that's the best thing. That Purchase College has been my second home and has been my second family. And I hope for those of you that are coming in, um, learn to appreciate that. And, you know, don't, like I said, don't take it for granted and enjoy every single moment of it because it's amazing. It's an amazing ride. Thank you, Alvana. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> uh, Justin Austin. Yeah, I'll echo Andy from the office. You know, I wish someone would tell you that <laughs> you were in the good old days before you ended up. I can't remember the exact quote, but. Uh, that's true. And it's probably annoying to hear as a young person. I'm sure I heard it a million times and I was like, mom, like stop. But you know, it's so true because this is the part of your life where you'll probably have the least amount of responsibilities and the most amount of fun. Um, where your friends are close, you can just walk, you know, down the hallway or to the new or alumni and, you know, hang out with your friends. And that's what's so great about college is that social aspect where you get to become who you'll be as an adult and you know 
figure out all these things about yourself. And in terms of advice, I would just say, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. That's generally mm -hmm. where all these really positive things come, um, where you know you never know what door is gonna open or what window is gonna open. So by putting yourself out there in, in positions to meet people, and make connections that you never know how that's gonna pay off one day. And I'm sure Chris doesn't remember this as, as much as I do, but um, at, you know, a couple years after I had graduated, I reached out to him and I was like, hi, like I need a job, can you help me? And, and he did, he helped me and he created a position for me um, you know, in the athletic office. I don't know if like, that's something he remembers, but I remember it because it was so much story and you never know when something like that it's going to pay off and it's because of the family that purchase really is so yeah so for me uh obviously the big one is just like everyone's been saying enjoy it um you know i, I hate to admit it i still have dreams that <laughs> i'm still a per you know i still have like another year and you know i got this whole year ahead of me and then i'll wake up and i'm like oh man you know it's i still want it you know 10 years later uh, you know, just that, that level of competition and, and just being able to be around my friends all the time. Uh, so definitely that's, that's the big one. Enjoy it. But I would also say, uh, as far as advice goes, um, just especially for students coming in, pick, uh, pick your role models, pick the guys or girls who you're going to kind of model your, your college careers after, uh, you know, guys who, who carry themselves well, who go about their business, who work hard, um, you know, learn how to be a good teammate uh, through guys like that. And that's going to, you know, obviously should give you success in your college career, but also, you know, just in life, um, you know, that should kind of, you know, help you follow the right people. Don't we, I've had, you know, I know people who have followed the wrong guys or girls and, you know, you could kind of see where there's that divide. So I'd say, you know, find your role models, whether that be a captain or like a staff member or something like that, just somebody you can look up to, um, you know, get advice from stuff like that. That's good advice. Thank you both. And going to save the, Eldest and wisest for the, for the end here, Bobby. Yeah, I mean, I think what everybody's been trying to say is probably just that purchase provides a tremendous amount of opportunity, which is kind of what I was trying to say before, is that I feel like what, whether it was there as a student or even coming back to the program in, in its infancy, to me, I looked at it always as a, as a great opportunity because now we had athletics and, and people were invested in trying to make the program be the best that it could be. And even for those prospects that are coming into the program, you are still having an opportunity to, to kind of build on the narrative that some of the, some of the panelists have tonight. And I, I think that's a very special thing. I think that a lot of times college students, when they're looking at places to go, of course, you know, you might consider a, a college or a university based on, on the name, but you could go to a high profile institution and, and not accomplish certain things. So it, for students, it's really about, no matter where you go, it's about, a, it's about what you do when you're there. And I think that, um, you know, for me, uh, Justin had kind of asked me about this before, about carving out a career in, in sports journalism. I, I think if I had not come to Purchase to be part of a program that gave me so many opportunities, I would not be where I am today. And I, I think if, you know, it's all about having those different diverse opportunities and chances to try out different things as some of our panelists have said tonight that's what makes purchase so special it's a special place because of the opportunities and the people that are there thank you bobby elder uh, statesman out <laughs> <laughs> okay at this time we just want to open it up to any viewers if you want to chime in um you just unmute yourself and you can ask questions or you can write it into the messaging um on the side um, I do see one question here uh, we have. It's, it's not, I guess it's more of a broad question, not for any particular panelist, just asking if Purchase offers training days um, as well as study groups. So Purchase, we do. The department has a staff member dedicated strictly to uh, coordinating the study halls um, and incoming freshmen are all uh, required to go to these study halls. And then it goes based off a of GPA or, you know, team by team. If the coach wants their players going to these study halls, they go. Um, same thing with the strength and conditioning and the training days. It's kind of a team by a team basis. Uh, we do have an outside vendor uh, with strength and conditioning that um, we have used in the past and certain teams take advantage of having that coach there. Um, but again, it's, it's a team by team basis. So does anyone else um, 
Alex, I'm not sure if, should we just have everyone on mute and anyone who has a question should ask? Um, well, I guess the, Alex, should just the viewers just kind of unmute themselves and ask any, any questions they have for our panelists? Yeah, I mean, if, if anyone has any questions, um, just so we don't, you know, everyone doesn't chime in at once, if, if you guys do want to type it into the chat, that might be easier for us to answer them. Um, don't be shy <laughs> to ask questions. I'm sure these guys are more than happy to answer anything you guys may want to ask. I have a question. Yes, sure. Uh, hi, my name's Marissa. I don't know if I should introduce myself or anything, but hi, I'm going to play softball. And I was wondering, what's the city like? Like, what's the town that the college said? It's in Harrison, right? Harrisburg? It's Harrison on some maps or Purchase, New York uh, is the actual mailing address. Um, the college itself is surrounded, it's more residential, um, and there's golf courses that surround the college, mm -hmm. um, but 10 minutes away, you have White Plains, New York, you have Fort Chester, New York, and both of those towns have train stations that you can hop on a train, and within 35 minutes, you're in the city. Okay. So there's a lot to do. Um, White Plains is kind of a mini city itself, so there's restaurants, there's movie theaters, malls, uh, shopping. Uh, bar stuff like that so there's plenty to to do in the local area um, mm -hmm. it's just the college itself is a more residential campus Steph, can I pop in quick on that of course so I mentioned this like sometimes I work at UConn uh, UConn is a huge campus it's the biggest campus I've ever been on I you know I went to purchase I worked at purchase and I was at another institution before UConn which was also a small institution and I am lost <laughs> I've been there for three years and I am lost. I don't know where half the buildings are if they're not around me. So what I love about Purchase and love, loved as a student was that the campus is really tight. So um, you, you drive into campus, you, you know, run around the loop and that's, that's the campus. Everything is there. Students in my, you know, in our time, and maybe some of the newer grads can comment, but students generally stayed on campus on the weekends and you know, a lot of the nightlife, you know, was, was around, was on campus. So not a lot of going off campus, which I really liked as a student because it just made a bigger, a larger community where you were, you know, able to kind of meet new people and see a lot of people out, you know, when the weather was nice. So um, a small comment about the campus. Thank you, Jess. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? chatty bunch. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I was just going to take this time to thank everyone for uh, being a part of this, obviously. Um, like I said in the beginning, some of you I'm just meeting for the first time tonight. I've heard a lot about you who try to research about purchase athletics, but it's great to hear from all of you. Um, you all have a bunch of insight that <laughs> in interests me, so I hope others got, got a bunch out of this as well. And I just wanted to piggyback on that, Justin. Um, you know, to everybody that's, that's here tonight, thank you so much to our our panelists, um, it really, it means a lot to me more than you'll ever know um, that, that you took some time to come back and give back. And, um, you know, you are uh, very important to us. And so I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud, very proud of everybody. So I just wanted to say that. So thank you so much. And just lastly, too, I, I want to thank our eight panelists. Um, it was great seeing, you know, so many, so like familiar faces, everyone. Um, so thank you for coming back. And also thank you to alumni engagement for coordinating all this. And thank you, Alex um, and Nadej for, for all your work and, and putting this whole thing together. So thank you. And I'm just checking the chat, make sure that there's no other questions here. Thanks, Beth. It was really a, a big team effort, honestly. No pun intended. I guess pun intended. <laughs> but um, but no, it really was. Uh, and we're really hoping to that we could do something like this again in the future. I think it, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. So thank you, everyone, for your willingness to volunteer your time and give back to the Purchase community. It's really important to do that as a, uh, a member of the alumni uh, association. So thank you so much for that. 
Thank you. And for all the um, incoming recruits and everything that are here tonight, um, if you come up with any questions afterwards, you know, just go to purchasecollegeathletics.com, uh, our athletics website. You can find my contact, Justin's contact, uh, Chris's, anyone there, shoot us an email. Um, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you all so much. Thank you, guys. It was great it was seeing fun. everyone. Stay healthy. Thank you for having us. You too. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye, Bye guys. Stay healthy and Bye. safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.